Telecameras three and four working. Activate radio contact with the outside. Love, wisdom, abundant life. Live a life filled with meaning, purpose, and a sense of accomplishment. Can you hear me? Welcome to the teachings of Enoch. I'm your host, James Allen. You can contact me, 702-483-7769. That's 702-483-7769. Or online at teachingsofenoch.com. Let's get started with today's message. My guest is Kim Gaines Eckert. She is author of the book, Things Your Mother Never Told You, A Woman's Guide to Sexuality. And Kim is a licensed psychologist in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm James Allen. This is The Teachings of Enoch. Kim, you talk about the term redemptive sexuality. What exactly is that? I think uh, if you think about what it means to be redeemed and restored, um, from in the book when I talk about redemptive sexuality, it's connected to the reality that so many of the people that I work with as a therapist um, feel so broken in their in their own sexuality, and and then also it, it's about the just the reality that so many women, I'm right specifically to women in this book, are have experienced brokenness in their sexuality from unwanted sexual experiences, from sexual trauma. Um, and so thinking about what it means to live out a redemptive sexuality, both individually in your own self, based on um, what it means to move toward restoration and healing for yourself, but also really being part of a sexually whole community and looking at what it means to, to be part of restoring other women, specifically, I'm talking about in the book, be part of that for other women, so um, looking at ways to help other women in their own journeys, restoration, whether that's in a small scale, just in the people that are in your community and life, um, listening and having open conversations and and being able to um, help them on their journeys, or in in a bigger sense, I work with a lot of college students, and and it's so exciting to hear them um, become passionate about things like about sex trafficking and wanting to really make a difference and impact um, and, and do something to impact the lives of these girls who've been trafficked, whether internationally or locally. And, and I think all of those are part of that same thing, what it means to live a redemptive sexuality, both individually, in community, and then in a, in a broader cultural, in a bigger community sense as well. In your experience with counseling with people and and in your personal life, and as well as maybe speaking on this topic with your book, is there a time where you kind of feel like, I've heard all these things and I just want to scream out this issue, this one message to the church, to the Christian community. Mm-hmm. What would that message be? I think the message would be, uh, I mean, my heart when you ask that question is to the women who are listening, um, and and that is that who you are is not what you've done, mm-hmm. and it's not what you've had done to you, that who you are is a person who can be, and and if you are not already, will be, could be restored, redeemed, um, in Christ and through Christ, that who you are is then who you are becoming in Christ. And and those things that happened to you or that you have done, whatever the case, um, those are part of your story and they're part of who you are, but they are not you. They are not the you of you, and they certainly don't have to define your future. And I think that um, those chains hold down so many women, and I see that in my, and, and, and even in the way you ask the question in my own life, the life of the people closest to me, I see that theme um, consistently, and, and what a struggle it is to remember that truth that um, I'm not those things that I've done or had done to me, but I'm someone else, and I'm who I am is who I'm becoming every day in Christ and, and who Christ is in me. 
My guest is Kim Gaines Eckert. She is author of the book, Things Your Mother Never Told You, A Woman's Guide to Sexuality. And Kim is a licensed psychologist in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm James Allen. This is The Teachings of Enoch.
guest is Kim Gaines Eckert. She is author of the book, Things Your Mother Never Told You, A Woman's Guide to Sexuality. And Kim is a licensed psychologist in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm James Allen. This is The Teachings of Enoch. For those who have had traumatic, unwanted, unpleasant sexual experiences, what is the road to recovery and I guess the better word would be just a healthier outlook of yourselves, a a healthier outlook of your sexuality. Of course, it's going to mean acknowledging that a lot of times when things are unpleasant, we we push them away and, oh, you know, I'm I'm over that, but we're really not. So what what really is the road? Yeah, well, I think that you're absolutely right. I mean, so, I mean, the sad reality is that it's just such a huge percentage of women who've had, who've had, um, some kind of unwanted sexual experience, whether that is um, childhood sexual abuse or a date rape or, um, I mean, so often in my own counseling experience when I ask women about um, sexual trauma in their history, they say no the first couple of sessions, but then mention something like, well, my husband did force me to have um, a kind of sex I wasn't comfortable with. Um, when he was drunk at some point in our marriage, or well, I did have a boyfriend who um, pushed me to have sex, but I didn't say no, but I didn't want to, um, and I didn't know what to do. Those kinds of stories get told over and over and are so hard, um, so hard. And so regardless of, of what the context of it is, one of the most universal themes that I see with, with women, and, and is really common with any kind of sexual trauma is self-blame. And so whatever it was, um, it it was my fault or it's something I did that caused it or that kept it. I, I should have done something different. Um, and so I think a huge part of that healing process is telling the story, finding a safe and trusted person, a counselor or a friend or someone who you, um, a spouse, if that's safe, to really be able to say this, to name the truth about what happened, to say it out loud, um, and there is there is power in letting someone bear witness to your story. And so saying that out loud, um, naming the truth, um, not to just blame, but to say the truth and speak truth about what happened. And then I think that the healing aspect of that is comes after that, to be able to really identify the impact of those experiences on you, on how... Um, and, and, and the, the possibility of how this may have impacted you, there's a lot of different um, ways that could happen in your relationships and your sexual functioning and being able to really kind of look at that, kind of assess that damage. And then, um, and then and this is a huge oversimplification, but then really have somebody help you figure out ways to kind of rewrite your story, you know, and think about that next, the, the next chapters and how you want those to be different if that's if that piece in your history has defined um, a lot of a lot of your story moving forward, um, and so there's a lot of other pieces along the way. But telling your story is to a safe and trusted person, um, and that's important <laughs> too. is is essential, I think, to be able to really begin to move forward a healing place. My guest is Kim Gaines Eckert. She is author of the book, Things Your Mother Never Told You, A Woman's Guide to Sexuality. And Kim is a licensed psychologist in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm James Allen. This is The Teachings of Enoch. And my world just falls apart Lord, you put me back together And lift me up to where you are There is hope Love that conquers fear I have found redemption 
with my guest today, Kim Gaines Eckhart, and she's author of the book Things Your Mother Never Told You, A Woman's Guide to Sexuality. Kim is a licensed psychologist in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm James Allen, and this is The Teachings of Enoch. You talk about in your book that came out that we are sexual beings, and it's okay. Um, Yes, absolutely. I think, you know, we are really surrounded in our culture by some opposing messages. So our sort of popular culture obviously um, tells us that absolutely we're sexual creatures and that's who we are and and that is a great thing. And in fact, that's sometimes I think the message we get is that that's the most important part of who we are. Um, and if we look at advertising or the or media, entertainment, the sexualized nature of of advertising or particularly of women is so prevalent that I think we can sometimes get that idea that, yeah, sex is it, that's all there is. Yeah, so sometimes yeah. I think in the, yeah, that in the Christian or the evangelical culture, there's kind of a reaction to that. Um, and so I, I think especially for a lot of people growing up, they unintentionally get this message that sex is bad or dirty or something to be viewed with, um, that our sexuality is something that just hooks us and does bad things to us. Um, so there's a lot of press about things like sexual addiction um, or problems in the sexual 
nature of our culture, but not as much about the goodness of it. And it is a gift created by God, and it's such a good, it's a goodness, it's how we've been made in God's image. And we get a conflicting message from our pop culture, like you said. One mm-hmm. is that it's great, it's the best thing ever, but it's it's not real. I mean, if you look at the pictures we see in the magazines, they're all photoshopped. I mean, mm-hmm. nobody, nobody even looks like that. Uh, beautiful girls that we see on the stage, they've got all the makeup and you know, on the TV and, and, and the artificial implants and the plastic surgery and the lifestyle lift. So there's... So there's that image of the physical that's Mm -hmm. certainly distorted by our pop culture. And then, like you said, Kim, on the other hand, we have kind of the Christian perspective that, well, we're kind of, we we don't a lot of times really know where to fall into things because we see on the one hand the extreme, and then on the other side of it, we feel like, well, where, what does God want us mm-hmm. to value as far as our sexuality. So what what are some of your thoughts on that? You're a practicing psychologist there in Chattanooga, in the Chattanooga area, and you've been in this field for a while. So what what do you what do you see as that balance for the Christian life? Well, one of the I mean one of the images I sometimes use to to talk about sexuality and some of the dichotomies between the you know, the opposing kind of viewpoints are I think about sexuality as this kind of banquet that God has created, you know, this this huge feast, um, and it's a good a good gift, a good feast, and our culture, I think, sometimes takes that picture and just focuses in on the dessert, right, the chocolate cake at the end of the feast that... It's just that chocolate cake, and not only is it just that chocolate cake, but it's the like the tasting and the eating of it. Not looking at, I mean, it's just the sort of pure ecstasy of eating the chocolate cake. That's it. So how it looks and the experience of just that one piece. When and maybe sometimes in the the Christian kind of culture, um, well, I'm not sure what the perfect the equivalent would be, but it, it's 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 a different piece of it when or or a really a really small piece that's that's not as um, focused on taste or whatever. But really, the the picture of sexuality is that whole feast. It's sitting with with someone you love, with people that you love. It's about connecting and longing for people, longing for intimacy and connection, having that experience, sitting with them. Um, I think sexuality is its so much more than just bodily, physical intimacy. It's who we have, how we've been made, male and female, in God's image, how we've been made, longing for connection with others, longing to have intimate, real relationships with others, and also with this real need and longing for fruitfulness. I mean, I think to, to give, to be generative, which... Um, you know, in the most basic, simplistic way, I think we think about, you know, having sex means that you might have children. And, and a- absolutely, that's one, one aspect and a really important aspect. But I think it means something that that's what happens as one part of our sexuality, that part of who we are as sexual beings is, is making us long for other people and also long to care for and give back and, and give to, um, give to others. And I think that's a much more complete picture of who we are as sexual beings than just that kind of chocolate cake eating experience. I remember listening to Josh McDowell a few years ago, and he said that the most important sexual organ that you have is your mind. And mm-hmm. that really struck struck with me because a lot of people, I think, mm-hmm. they think it's their eyes. <laughs> or, mm-hmm. and, Absolutely. And, and, and like the 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 scriptures tell us though the eyes see they're they're never full and if we're constantly going after as a culture the the next conquest or that person that looks attractive it, it's very empty and it's not mm-hmm. it's not really that other person as we perceive them isn't really what we long for inside because it's it's a different person and we have this image that's made up in our culture of that mm-hmm. of that sexualized person. Well, I think, too, sexuality, in sex in particular, in our culture, we get this 
it's this picture about pleasure. So focus on pleasure and, and our own pleasure, self-pleasure. And, and really the biblical and the Christian picture of sexuality is so much the opposite of that. Not the opposite of pleasure. I mean, and, and huge difference from that. I mean, God created us with um, physically for pleasure, but that it's about self-giving, that it's about giving in love and, and giving to someone else what they can't give themselves. Um, and and everything about that our sexuality is is about self sacrificial love, and we think about how um, the model of Christ for us giving and constant giving, um, and and when and as a psychologist, so thinking about people that come to me when they're having difficulties in their in their intimate relationships or in their sexual functioning, so much of it can then be connected to to that aspect, and. And how much it's helped when we shift into a focus on what it means to give in relationships, what it would mean to what it means to give in love relationships and physically intimate relationships instead of instead of looking for ways to get what we need. We're not getting what we need in this way instead of how we can give somebody else and give this person that we love what they can't give themselves. Kim, it's been a fascinating interview. My guest today on the show has been Kim Gaines Eckert, and she is author of the book Things Your Mother Never Told You, A Woman's Guide to Sexuality. And Kim is a licensed psychologist in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I'm James Allen, and you've been listening to the teachings of Enoch. What's going on? What are they stopping for? Love, wisdom, abundant life. That's my hope for you. You've been listening to the teachings of Enoch. I'm James Allen, your host. You can contact me, 702-483-7769. That's 702-483-7769. Or online at teachingsofenoch.com.